What is up my beautiful humans, Andy Valentine here and today we're going to jump back into Fusion 360 and take a look at creating a certain type of joint that is used a lot in model making, the hinge joint, and how you actually prepare that properly and are able to test it and make sure that all your parts move around exactly as you would expect them to. Let's do it! So joints in Fusion 360, why on earth would you need to do these? Well, often you want to be able to test that, that the movement between two parts works in the way that you would expect it to. And you can test that pieces don't interact with each other in non-favorable ways. And that can be done over a lot of different joint types. Today we're going to look at a particular kind of joint. It's a rotation joint where you know a, a piece revolves around a, another piece. Um, it's a saddle joint, a hinge joint. There are lots of different joints that use this mechanism, but we're going to look at it in the kind of hinge formation at the moment. So this prop is the Tempad from Loki, and in the last episode we saw that it had this lid that it moved upwards, uh, it opens up. So I've had to update my models accordingly. And so what you'll see here is I've got the base, which has got these sections cut out for the joint, and then there is a bar that runs all the way through the middle, which is just ever so slightly smaller than the holes it goes through. Then there is a lid which sits on top, and that also goes through the bar. Now there is a tiny bit of setup that you need to do here and you need to ensure that the different pieces are set up as different components. So the main crux of the body of this thing is the just the main body of, of the uh, build that I've been doing. Then the lid has been created as a separate component because it's going to be a single piece that moves and the pivot bar is a separate component. Um, if you need to set up things as a new component, let's say I wanted to make this key here a new component you can just right click on it and create components from bodies and after a second it will just create there like new key body but we don't want to do that at the moment then what we're going to do is going to in here and go to assemble joint now what you'll start to see is there are lots of different types of joints and lots of different motions rigid joints revolts revolts revolutes even sliders cylindrical joints, pin slots, planers, and ball joints. So you can set all of these things up, set up their constraints, set up their movements, um, but we're gonna be going with a simple one, which is this revolute. So that's one thing moving around another thing. So what we wanna do is set up how the, what things are going to move, what's the moving thing, and what does it move around? So component one is the thing that is going to move. Um, how is it that it wants to move? A simple move for this would be fine. So we're going to select the point that is going to be the moving point, which is basically this inside circle here. So that's the inside circle. And then component two is the thing that is going to move around, and it's going to be the circle of the bar. And if we've done it correctly, there you go. You should see it do a 360 degree revolution. Um, you can set any off offsets, angles, flips, all that kind of stuff, but we don't need it at this moment in time. And when we click OK, we are done. That's it. This is pretty simple. What that leaves us with is this flag. And then at any time you can double click on the flag and rotate that and it'll move the component one related to the other. And obviously it knows where zero is so you can always set it back to where the initial point was. Um, so what I can do now is say well does this joint actually work? So if I take open up the lid here go to the main body and reduce its capacity to like 50% and check it out from the right hand side. So this dark bit here is the back of the base body. And this piece here, including this little line that comes up here, is the lid. So I need to ensure that this line and this corner don't intersect because if they do, it won't work as a joint. So if I start to rotate this backwards, you can see straight away that that corner would intersect with this, which means this thing can't open in the way that it's been built. And it'll intersect all the way through to about here. So you could just cut out a section around here, which would make it work, or you could cut the corner off. I don't want to do any of those things. In principle, what I need to do is make sure that when this joint's working, the lift mechanism moves upwards before it moves backwards. That should give it enough clearing to do that. So I'm going to adjust this joint um, over the next like 15 minutes and then we'll come back and see the difference in a moment. 
So here we are, about 20 minutes later, having played with the um, pivots a bit and just adjusted the position and a little bit of trial and error just to find the, the sweet spot where the joint should be. So now what we'll notice is the, the joint is actually off center um, and it's a slightly irregular shape. It just means the movement is upwards a little bit as opposed to being backwards and down as the start of its range of motion. So the difficult bit is basically this bit of line here. There's a line that goes from that point to that point. And it's difficult to see now, but when we rotate this, instead of it going backwards and down, it kind of goes across and up. So at this point, it's, it's not intersecting with this top part. So I've cut a little bit away from here as well to make it easier. Um, but also by moving this movement off center, it doesn't just rotate around the central point, it, it moves the movement kind of up and to the right more because I've moved the pivot point up and right. So it'll move all the way around until this point, the back of the lid hits the body. So it'll move all the way around until basically there, 108-ish degrees, which seems like kind of a nice, nice open point. It's not like slamming all the way open, it'll stop it from opening all the way and all the joint works as you can double you can basically double check it again you know you don't have to be exactly side on you can see here how nothing interacts and it doesn't rub all the way around until it closes so you can actually just set that at a point so let's say minus 90 and you could leave it there and then go do other bits and then you can come back and you can set it back to zero and zero will be its home position. And obviously if you put another joint, say the top of this lid had another joint on it, that joint would move with it and then you can move one and then the other separately. So you can create kind of like full series of joints and see how they all interact with one another. That's it for our joints. Wave goodbye. Wave. See, that process can actually be used to make hinge joints, saddle joints, and pivot joints. They're all pretty much the same. It's a single thing rotating around another thing. There are different kind of joints that we can do in Fusion 360, such as plane joints, uh, ball and socket joints, loads of different ones. And we will get onto those at another time. You know, I'm just trying to keep these lessons a bit more concise and focused. As always, if you've got any questions, throw them in the comments below. Otherwise, you know where the like and subscribe is, and it means a lot to me. And with that, we're done. Catch you next time. Laters.